Dear colleagues, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to make a speech here. Presentations were really brilliant. Our presentation is devoted to the mucosa dissection. Submucous dissection allows to remove the whole block of neoplasm, local relapse was more often in the dissection group. However, the total number of complications was the same. So the conclusion is that dissection is more efficient is uh, in terms of single block neoplasm removal and uh, less frequent relapse. That could be the end of our presentation. However, there are, in, there are different data. Last year, results of a multi-centered study was published, performed by Australian doctor. So they performed 1,000 resections of uh, mucosa. Quite a high percentage of relapse. However, in 91%, all neoplasms were removed successfully. This is quite a good number. There are advocates and opponents for both resection and dissection in submucous surface, so let's consider advantages and disadvantages. Advocates of dissection say that local relapse in colon is a very complicated problem and should be treated in a surgical way. When we remove the epithelial tissue, the relapse can account for 22%, quite a, a big number. What's the average size of this neoplasm? I found three studies about this, and usually it's less than 10 millimeters, quite a small one. So can we remove this newly emerged neoplasm? Here you can see statistics. It includes both malignant and non-malignant cases. Only in 17 cases surgery was required and all the rest relapsed neoplasms were removed successfully. So, do we need a dissection in submucous area in case we have a heavy fibrosis? This work was published in 2015. 30% 30 cases of relapse. The majority of relapsed neoplasms were treated by resection and in seven cases a standard biopsy. Indeed, relapse is a problem when the size of a neoplasm is big, but even this problem can be solved by dissection in submucous area. However, quite often the size of a new neoplasm is small and dissection is not recommended and uh, a repeated resection can be performed or even a biopsy or electrocoagulation. So this hypothesis is not true because local relapse is not a clinical problem since it is successfully treated by 
a repeated endoscopic intrusion. Perforation of a colon during dissection accounts for 5%. If we operate on all these patients, dissections will would not be an appropriate method. But pay attention that total complications after dissection is uh, no more than 1%. Perforation can be direct and postponed. Direct perforation happens quite often, 27%. But endoscopic treatment is not required. It is clipped quite easily. Postponed perforation happens quite rarely, but in 100% of cases it requires a surgery. If we compare risks of surgery for resection and for dissection, according to American doctors, in resection risk is twice higher than in dissection in terms of perforation and complications. So this hypothesis is not true as well. In the majority of cases, perforation in ESD is not a complication because it is easily removed by clipping. Next, hypothesis about fragmental removal of a neoplasm. Indeed, if a morphologist cannot tell us positive or negative borders of resection we have, then the relapse ratio will be 15 percent, even if we removed a neoplasm in one block, still there will be some edema around the scar. If we have carcinoma like this, if the morphologist will tell us that invasion into submucus more than one millimeter, lymphodissection will be required. Let's imagine that we removed the fragment into pieces and the line of coagulation went like this and the morphologist obtained two pieces like this. So it's just a dysplasia. Uh, it's not cancer and patient can go back home but he will come back to us with metast metastasis in lymph nodes or in liver. So, indeed, fragmental removal of a neoplasm does not allow us to assess morphologically the resection borders properly. Other factors for comparison when we are selecting between resection and dissection. Resection takes less time than dissection, four, five times. Cost of procedure is calculated with regards to the Japan conditions. We can buy other tools, but still, Dissection will cost more than resection. So we have quite a clear picture. If we have a non-malignant malignant neoplasm, we can remove it by fragment, fragments. But if it's malignant, we can remove it as one block. But it's needed to decide whether it is malignant or not. Quite often, we have to make a decision if we have a surface tumor. This year in the Endoscopy magazine, there was an interesting study published about 800 spreading tumors, 414 were with granules, 
and in 40 percent they detected an invasive cancer which required surgery without granules tumors showed signs of cancer even more often and it corresponded to T1B stage. Where is the focus of invasive tumor? In LSTG, invasive tumor was located near the big node in 56%, in depression area 28%, and multifocal location accounted for 16%, 10%. In the upwards area, and so on. So, what are the disadvantages? There was no subclassification of these surface spreading tumors. However, in the other study, it was conducted. And in the surface spreading tumors with equal granules, the risk of malignant tumor was less than 1%. With different granules, it was already 13%. Without granules, 6%. And with pseudodepression, without granules, the risk was 42%. We have um, intestinal pits, so we can easily decide whether we have a malignant or non-malignant tumor cannot help us to differentiate uh, between surface spreading tumors. So if you have equal granules, in all cases we have type number five of intestine pits. So we can rely upon these pits in order to decide upon the nature of the tumor. If we have different granules of different size, except for the biggest granular, the picture was the same, fifth type of pits. But in the biggest granular, in 42% of cases, tumor was malignant, and the pattern of pits was not number five. Here, in 5% of cases, malignant tumors were not followed by pits number five. So we should be really careful here. And here in pseudo-depression, in 43% of cases, again, we did not have uh, intestinal, intestinal pits number five. So first of all, we have to differentiate between tumors which are subject to endoscopic treatment and not subject to endoscopic treatment. So, with granules. Here we judged by the presence of a node with the size more than 10 millimeters. Also, we looked at depression and invasive pattern of our intestinal pits. So, as for the specificity and PPV, depression and pattern was important. So, what can be the conclusion based on all these tables? If we have a neoplasm, LSTGH with uh, equal granules and we don't have intestinal pits number five, we may say that this is a non-malignant tumor. This section is not needed. We can safely uh, and cheaply perform resection. If we have uh, no intestinal pits number five, we know that in the area of a big node, 40 percent is the uh, risk of a malignant tumor, and we have to remove this neoplasm completely in one block. If such a neoplasm is characterized by a fragment size more than 10 millimeters and 
the VN pits type, then we have a T1B or T2 type. So we have to perform an ultrasound examination, and after that, a surgery will be performed and not an endoscopic treatment. If we have a LST and GPD tumor and intestinal pits are the type then five, we know that we cannot rely uh, on the absence of the number five pits. So if uh, a tumor is less than two centimeters, they can be, have to be removed as a single block. If we have pits 5N, we are speaking about, about adenocarcinoma with the uh, T1B invasion depth and surgery will be required. If we have this type of neoplasm, then we know that malignant tumors are quite rare here, and we have no intestinal pits number five, so invasive carcinoma risk is also very low. However, it's not zero, so it would be good to remove these neoplasms in one block, except for uh, these curved adin adenomas. If we have some protrusions here in subnucleus <coughs> surface uh, and uh, 5N pit pattern, we have an adenocarcinoma, T1B, and surgery will be required. So dissection in some mucous area can also be used for carcinoma shaped neoplasms, if we have really clear signs of invasive uh, tumor, surgery, surgery will be required as well, except for dissection in submucous area and mucus uh, and mucosa resection. There are other methods like circular cutting and other types of uh, dissection, uh, results are a bit le uh, less uh, reliable, less successful. However, in some cases they can be used, especially at the uh, stage of experimenting with the method, and Japanese colleagues use them quite, quite actively. And don't forget that we are treating not a tumor, but a person, and he can have some concurrent diseases. However, our Japanese colleagues proved uh, that even in patients older than 80 years old, in rectum, dissection can be safe. However, there can be some concurrent pathology and uh, it can prevent us from performing some procedures, uh, risk of uh, death is high, so any invasion should be safe and fast. So this patients can die from peritonitis or profound bleeding. Bed preparation is a counter-education for MR or ASD. So if we have such a neoplasm and uh, we have bleeding, all the content will uh, overflow uh, into the stomach area and uh, clips will not help us. What our Japanese experts say about indications for colorectal dissection. Uh, this is a guideline published last year. If we sum up the contents, we may say that dissection and submucous area can be performed if we have signs of uh, malignant tumor and fibrosis. And a residual 
carcinoma or a relapse. So we have a relapse of adenoma after dissection. Resection is not indicated. And everybody starts with the epigraph, but I will finish with it. I would like to quote Tanaka, and he wrote as follows. In the clinical practice, it is very important to distinguish between the indications for EMR, piecemeal EMR, and ESD by thoroughly examining the patient before the operation to determine whether the neoplasm is an adenoma or adenocarcinoma. Of course, it is necessary to carry out examinations of multiple fo foci. We would like to find out whether the morphological characteristics are propagating as uh, in Asia, whether the efficiency of ESD and AMR can be compared as to the efficiency in different clinical situations. <coughs> for instance, in serrated tissues. Thank you for your attention.